Hello, welcome back. This is Jamie Lancaster um, working on our Zappos project. We are on our third analysis step. So if you're looking at your project, the description for this section of the assignment is here. Create box plots to get a sense of the distribution of each variable. Make at least four box plots. Price by brand, overall rating by brand, comfort rating by brand, style rating by brand. I want you to insert a text box and let me know what you see. What your things you're going to be looking for are like, are some brands more consistent than others? Like, is there a brand that everyone is uniformly unhappy with, um, while other brands have a distribution, quite a wide distribution, some shoes they love and some they don't? Um, or do you think that outliers in some plots might have influenced the average category scores seen in other charts? Like, maybe a brand that is otherwise quite popular has a really low rated single shoe, and if we were to think about how well they've done without that, maybe we think of them as being a better shoe with just sort of one bummer model. And then, which brands have the highest, lowest scores in each category? So if you have an older version of Excel, or for some reason your computer doesn't make box plots, you're going to have to either go borrow one from the business office, use the computer lab, or if you're watching this from someplace and you're not a Cal Poly student, borrow someone else's computer or maybe do it at work. All right, so let's get started. To make box plots, we need to grab our data, and it truthfully is easier to make the box plots if all your data is on this sheet. So I grab my raw data. I just highlight everything by clicking on that triangle and command seeing it. I move back to what's called sheet four and I command V it. And there's all of the data. All my instructions are still there over by R. Since this is the third part of our analysis, I'm gonna just rename this tab A3. And to try to reduce how crowded this looks, I know a lot of these things I'm not going to need like model so I can make it small, but the other thing I can do is hide it. I'm going to use price, but I'm not going to use MSRP. I'm not going to use on sale, number of views, true to style or true to width for at least this exercise that I'm demonstrating. Feel free to take a look at any of these things if you want to make a box plot for those, but it's not required. It, it may be interesting, and I'm going to hide that. So now I've got more room here, like more real estate to be working on my box plots. And I can see by these two dark green lines that some things are hiding. So to make box plots, we wanna have price by brand. So I need two things. I'm gonna take brand, I'm gonna command shift down arrow. I know price is right here, so I'm gonna keep my finger on the command key, control key if you're on a PC. I'm gonna click on that bottom lowest most price, then I'm gonna click shift and up arrow. And now I'm up here at the top. It's useful to do that down and then back up business because then when you insert your box plot, box and whisker, it'll be placed up top where you are. So this is my first chart. In this one, I'm going to place it, I guess, down here, and I'll describe it here. And this is going to be called box plots of shoe price by brand. And that's my title. This is my shoe price here. It's pretty obvious that that's the shoe price and it's pretty obvious that this is the brand. I'm going to remove these horizontal lines and I'm going to insert access titles. Even though technically you don't need them, I want you to enter them. I want you to get in the habit of defaulting to an access title. Add chart element, access titles will do both. Shoe price, or we can just call it price. And here we've got brand. All right, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that what I'm doing is more front and center for you guys. I wanna do a little bit of formatting here. The reason being that, see how there's the X in the middle of each box plot? That indicates the mean, the average brand price, or the average price per brand of shoe. And then there's a dark line median, but you can't really see them. So if you click on any one of those box plots, they'll all sort of come alive. You've got to click in the blue spot, and then you right click. 
You can select this option Format Data Series, and that'll pull up an option block to your right. Up here we can adjust our fill, we can adjust our effects, or we can adjust series options. We want to adjust the fill And rather than allow it to be automatic, we're gonna pick another color that you can see through. Right, you don't have to choose that orange, but something that makes it so that those boxes are transparent. And now we can see the difference between the mean, the X, and the median aligned in the middle. So if I were gonna interpret this, box plots of shoe price by brand, you know, what do I see? So with regard to price, when I take a look at this, I see a handful of things. The first thing I notice is that our most expensive shoes, here, Hoka, Mizuno, and Saucony, they make our most expensive shoe. If you need a quick box plot refresher, you can take a look at the section in the book, or if you're not in my class, you can Google something. Um, but a quick rundown is that in within the box lies half of the shoes. So half of the prices, for instance, of this of Mizuno shoes are going to lie between $140 and the upper bound here, $194.98. Their lowest price shoe is going to be either where the whisker ends at $105. That's their lowest price, and their highest price is here at $249.95. But with Hoka, you can see this dot. That means that they have an outlier, a really singularly abnormally high priced shoe. And the outliers are defined by being one and a half, more than one and a half times the difference between the top and the bottom of the box. So the more compact the box, the easier it's going to be to get an outlier. Like taking a look at Saucony, that box is really big. So its highest price shoe, the most expensive in the data set, $274.95, isn't actually considered an outlier for that brand because they've got such a wide distribution of prices within of different models within their shoe. So when I look at this, what I'm looking for is, you know, things that, that just looking at the averages don't tell us. Right? We can look at the prices by the averages and look, the X's mark the average, they're relatively close. But the similarities in averages sort of belies a really vast range of prices. Like, for instance, Hoka, Mizuno, and Saucony have our highest, their highest price shoes, all with shoes over $200. New Balance also has a shoe that comes in over $200, right? So I'm going to say this, that Hoka, actually I, I wrote this someplace else and I will copy and paste it over so I don't, you don't have to spend me, spend a bunch of time with me typing. So that's the first thing that I would notice. Um, the other thing that I notice is that there are also a lot of low priced shoe brands like Adidas, Adidas Running, Asics, New Balance, Skechers, and Under Armour all have shoes that come in very close to $50, $51.97, $52, Saucony $64, so let's focus on the 50s, New Balance at $52, Asics at $54, and Adidas Running at $58. So those shoes have something in the $50 range. The other thing I notice is that some shoes some models, some brands, offer models at a wide range of price points. Like if we take Mizuno, for instance, you can get a Mizuno shoe between $105 and $249.95. Right? That's telling me that these brands, you see that too, Adidas, Asics, Mizuno, New Balance, Saucony, big range in prices. These are brands that are making shoes a variety of models for different runners with different needs. Whereas some brands have much more compact price ranges, like Hoka isn't really offering anything in the low range. On has a very narrow range. Topo has a narrow range near the top of the market. But then these two brands, Skechers and Under Armour, these are low priced shoe brands. All of their shoes come in at that low price point. So it gives us a sense of what's happening. Um, in price that gives us more information than is what's continued or what's contained when we look at the averages. So if I were to type that up, that's what I would say. Saucony, Mizuno, and Hoka, I'm not going to read it. You can pause and read it if you want, and that's the type of description that I'm looking for. I'm going to raise this up, and we're going to move on to the next one. 
So next, I'm going to take a look at overall rating. I want to make a box plot showing overall rating by brand. I'm going to zoom out here a little so that I can capture it all. I didn't need to go that far, but so that it's a little bit easier to follow what I'm doing. So to make the second box plot, I'm going to do the same as I did before. Click on the word brand, command shift down arrow, scroll over to overall rating, keep my finger on command, again that's control if you're on a PC, and then shift up arrow, and now I've captured all of that. I can insert a box and whisker plot, and I'm going to drag it over here and place it next to overall rating. Zooming in again, we're going to kind of do the same things that we did before. Chart title is going to be box plots of overall rating by brand. Then, oops, add chart element. We're going to do two axis titles. price, brand, left click, right click, format data series. What do I want? I want it to be a color that I can see through. Great. And so for overall rating, you know, what do I notice? That there's a little bit less variation. Let's get rid of these horizontal lines. Um, a little less variation than in price, right? Everybody seems to be closer in line here. All brands have at least one shoe that's scoring four and a half or above. Um, and many brands have at least one five-star shoe, as you can see by the upper end of their whisker. Um, the interesting thing here is that many brands have some low-ranking outliers that may be pulling their values down. So we were seeing that Asics and Topo were our highest-rated shoes, and that makes sense. But Mizuno, if we take a look at them, they're quite a high rater too, but that one outlier is pulling them down. Is that a you know, one particular bum shoe that's reducing the overall value of those, of the overall rating. Um, and some shoes have really consistent ratings like Hoka. They, this is an outlier here, but it's by no means the lowest rated shoe, but most of their shoes are, people have a really tight satisfaction range. So how I would describe this one is about like that. And here's my typed version, pause and read if you want to. And there may be some things that you would want to add um, to have that make a little more sense or to fill out something you see that I didn't. So we've got two more to do. We need to do comfort rating and style rating. Let's blow through those fairly quickly. Zooming out again. I've got comfort right here. So it's my second one over. Let's do comfort first. Command or Control, Shift, Down Arrow. Keep your hand on the Control or Command. Click on the bottom value, Shift Up Arrow. Insert Box and Whisker. Bring it down here. And this is going to be Comfort Rating. format it, box plot of comfort rating by brand, add axes or axis titles, Your brand. Did you see my mistake from before you? I just caught it. That's not 
price. That's overall rating. There we go, let's zoom in a bit. I had to adjust my axis on overall rating because I made a mistake. So this is comfort rating, left click, right click, format data series, fill, color, whatever you want, as long as we can see through it. Wow, comfort rating? <laughs> Huge variety. Every brand has at least one five-star rated shoe, but most brands, all brands actually have at least a three-star rated shoe, right? That's a huge range here. And then the interquartile range, the, midi mid the, the middle 50% is also really wide. So there's a lot of dispersion for each brand within comfort ratings. And if I were to think about what this might mean in terms of you or I buying a shoe, it tells me that customers have widely differing opinions um, about what makes a comfortable shoe because it's not tightly ranged. Many people are gonna give it a five and many people are gonna give it a three. It's not like up here overall rating where we're much more closely clustered. So if I were to take this and try to describe it, the things that I would be thinking about in terms of comfort rating is just the breadth that I see, the diversity, the, the, the wide array of comfort ratings that each shoe has. Um, they're broad bands, but they're all, you know, kind of fairly similar. If we back butt up to price, price, there's a lot of different difference between brands. You know, Mizuno is way up here and Under Armour is way down here. But if we come down here and look at comfort, right, Mizuno and Under Armour look a lot more similar, but Mizuno varies much more within itself for comfort than it does within itself for overall rating or for price. Because most people rate it within a much larger band or shoes on average have a much wider ranging. So shoes are more similar to each other in terms of comfort, but each brand sort of has a more dis dispersed rating. So. Right, it tells us that, I mean, I think that that tells us that comfort's quite individual. And feel free to take a look at my comfort rating description. I won't bother to read it for you because that takes too long and you have other things you wanna do besides watch these videos. And we've got our last one, last but not least, style. What do people think of the style of these shoes? Okay. Zooming out again to make it easier to grab the data for the chart. Click on brand, control or command, shift down arrow. Keep your hand on command or control. Click on the lowest style rating, shift up arrow, insert. We want a box and whisker chart that is in this distribution here that looks like kind of a, a frequency distribution. So there it is with histograms. And this, my friends, is a chart showing box plots of style rating by brand. Oh, I keep finding errors in the previous chart. Let's get rid of those horizontal bars. Let's add our axis titles. And this is style rating I've been using sentence case here and here, so I'm going to use sentence case here. My axis title is brand. I'm gonna choose that orange that I can see through. And what do we see for style? Again, I see that all brands of shoe have at least one model that has a five-star rating. Um, 
and so there's no like singular shoe that has the highest style. Topo and Under Armour, their box goes all the way up to style, indicating that um, you know most well not most people but 50% of people rate a shoe between for Topo 5 and 3.5 and Under Armour between f uh, 5 and 4 that's a really highly rated shoe for style people who buy those shoes think that they look great the shoes that people think are the ugliest were made by Adidas Asics Brooks and New Balance um, But it looks to me like every brand makes at least one shoe that people think is quite stylish. I'm just going to copy and paste over my example or my example text that you can read if you want to see what kind of comment I'm looking for when I grade these things. But there you go. All brands have at least one model of shoe that has a five star rating. Adidas, Running, Asics, Brooks, and New Balance have the least stylish shoes as rated by customers. Of course, always make sure that the wording you're using, Adidas running is lowercase a, ASICS is all caps, as is Skechers. Skechers does not have a T in it, and Under Armour is spelled O-U-R because it's got that British thing going on. So let's back out here and you'll get a sense of what this sheet would look like when you handed it in. It would look something like this. All right, thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.